Welcome to the Zenbit Touch series of podcasts. Today, we will speak about when company needs a CTO, why CTO as a service become more popular, and in-house or outsource success, when which is better. With Matt Kohran, Matt has 24 years of experience as a technical person. Right now, he is a CTO at TrueShield and Artnet. So Artnet connects the world's art collectors, professionals, and instructors to business critical data and instructions, information, and TrueShield is for founders, professional leaders, and uh, executives who run teams to build digital products. So welcome, Matthew. Tell me Thank about you. yourself a bit. Yeah, so I actually uh, recently resigned from Artnet, and I'm 100% focused on my startup, which is uh, TrueShield. So, what I'm working on is there, there are a bunch of studies in the industry today that show that we have some really, really big challenges in the software industry. Like we see like a 90% project failure rate, 30% of projects are canceled, 15% of projects actually threaten the existence of like the company executing them. And on average, we see about 50% of our engineering time is spent redoing or reworking completed code. So we've got a generally high rate of technical defects, quality is low. And we see even some of like the best and brightest companies like space agencies bleeding hundreds of thousands, if not millions, if not billions of dollars. And the, the thing is like with all these technical challenges, most of them have little to nothing to do with actual technology because the studies also show that in the average product or the project about 50 to 70% of the overall defects show up in the requirements. And so that means before we even lay a single line of code or make a single technical decision, we've already got a defective input to the whole system. And so that's what I'm focused on really solving uh, because it's, it's not just in the software business, but I'm focusing the software business because it's what I know. But this is why I started TrueShield and this is why I'm passionate about our first product because it basically addresses this elephant in the room that nobody else is really focused on. And so I'm tackling the root cause of the majority of failures that happen during the communication process that happens before, during, and after like the problem definition, resolution, brainstorming and solution design and construction. And what I'm doing is using a highly tuned communication model and boosting its power by using modern technologies like natural language processing, artificial intelligence and machine learning, essentially to raise the collective communication consciousness of every single stakeholder in a project to make it more successful. So this helps you avoid like not only these typical career killing and company killing project disasters, but it also adds like this pinpoint precision to projects which upgrade productivity. So when you solve this garbage in problem, you gain considerable competitive advantages by bringing more value to your customers faster. And so that's why I'm super excited about this, this product line and why I'm kind of going all in and you know making this into a business because the impact can be immense in the world. So that's what I'm focused on these days. It sounds really interesting and amazing and I wish you luck on it. So move on. <laughs> I take an interview. So let's move with our questions. And the first question is when company needs a CTO. Yeah, so I think it, it never hurts to have a CTO, um, right? Because they bring that level of overall um, structure to the engineering organization. Like, it's just like any practice, you know, like um, a hospital, you have to have a practice for a hospital to function effectively. You can't just throw a bunch of doctors in the middle of the field and say, okay, now run a hospital, right? It's the same thing with any organization. So to set up an engineering organization to be effective, like anybody who's writing software, which is pretty much everybody these days, needs to have that overall like engineering organization and the establishment of a practice. And that's, I think what the CTO brings to the table uh, more than anything else is just making sure that the, the machinery and the mechanics of the whole thing just work and they're effective and you're constantly improving. Yep, yep, I, I'm totally agree with you. So uh, let's move to our the next question. So it is why CTO as a service become more popular nowadays? Yeah, well, a lot of it, I think, is uh, just born out of necessity. Because if you look at the current labor shortages in the software industry, it's, it is insane. Like there are hundreds of thousands of jobs that are not being filled, right? And there's a huge demand because, you know, 
we've got this exponential growth in technology. Things are just like taking off like never before. And so, and there's not enough people to actually fill the need, you know, across the world because every single company is now driven like this whole work from home thing with COVID has like changed everybody's reality. I mean, we, we were already on kind of this crazy trajectory anyway, but then COVID boosted that. And now, you know, there's all these organizations that need these technical capabilities, you know, that are, they just can't live without these days. So part of it's the market. And also with, um, like with startup companies, they also need help, like getting organized and getting things established, like getting that machinery that I was talking about put together. But, um, you know, a CTO is a very expensive resource. So a lot of times it's better, like you don't want to make all the beginner's mistakes, right? When you start off with something new, like with, uh, with my company that I'm starting out, like I'm not, I, I'm a technical guy. I'm not really a marketing guy. I'm not really, um, I, I know some business stuff, but you know, I know that I know what I don't know. Right. And so I think that's part of the trick is like knowing what you don't know, finding somebody who knows it and helping you through that learning curve where you can actually be productive and avoid all those beginner's mistakes. Right. I think that's really where the real, where the real value is, you know, for, for both startups and established companies and, you know, between the labor shortages and the costs, I think it just makes sense that people are going with, you know, uh, interim or part-time CTO if they can't afford like a full-time one. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a nice idea to have such a one CTO for part-time. Yeah. So, and yep. last one question in in-house or outsource success, when, which is better? I guess the answer would be yes. <laughs> it really, it really, it really depends, right? What, what you're trying to accomplish. Um, I feel like that a lot of times if people are in-house, the more skin they have in the game, of course, the more they're going to be invested in your success. But, you know, if you, if you get somebody with a good reputation who's done this before and has the experience, then I think it's okay to have them outsourced. And you might actually have to pay a little bit of a premium for that, but you just, I don't think it's worth picking up anybody off the street, slapping the CTO title on them and just having them work for you part-time externally, because, you know, they're going to be pulled in a bunch of different directions and you, you really want to dive in and get that expertise, you know, to avoid those beginner's mistakes. I mean, that's really where the value is. So if you, if you can't get that externally, sometimes you want somebody who's maybe really technically proficient to come kind of uh, join you on the journey and maybe they can help you out internally. But um, yeah, it really depends on what you're looking for, I think. But I would, yeah, I think the more skin in the game, you know, the more they're going to be vested in your, in your company and the better job I think they're going to do. For example, for you, for Trust Shield, what do you prefer to stay in-house or to outsource for some reason? Well, luckily I am the CTO, so I don't have to outsource, outsource yeah. anything, right? So, but if it, if it were me, I would, um, I would probably opt for a temporary interim CTO. Like uh, the risk with going with a large firm is you're kind of rolling the dice on the quality of the person and, that, and that's what you're paying for, right? It's all about the quality and what the person can bring to the table. So I think you have to be really careful and vet no matter what. Um, but, you know, like with, with my business, I'm bringing in experts from all sorts of different areas, you know, where I don't to cover my blind spots. Mm -hmm. So, and with True Shield, you know, I kind of offer that as a service for people as well. Like if they have technical blind spots or they need help or, you know, direction on strategy or getting things organized or getting their, um, getting their machinery, like their engineering and set up and kind of functioning as a practice, right? That's where I would help, but they, they don't necessarily need somebody like me full time. Cause once the machinery is working and everything is kind of chugging along, you, it takes a lot less effort to keep it going, you know, just like, just like anything, right? The, the big effort is at the beginning. So um, I think it's worth doing early. I, that's why I'm engaging people early for, mm -hmm. to cover my blind spots that I don't know. Again, it's to avoid the learning curve, right? So the, the earlier, the better. And yeah, I would, 
especially if you're not a technical person, right? I definitely think it's worth getting somebody in who can at least vet things from a technical perspective. And it might, it might not be initially like this massive engagement where you're, you know, developing $10 million software. Maybe it's, you know, two or three hours just to check the feasibility to bounce the ideas off of somebody with the technical knowledge and organizational knowledge. So you can know like some, some things are feasible, but they're massively expensive. Like if you want to invent like the new, new generation of artificial intelligence that's going to do some magical thing, like it, it could cost you millions and millions of dollars, or you could leverage the existing technology and maybe um, find a way to have that help a market. And if you're not technical and you don't know these things, maybe you don't know the difference and, you know, you need somebody to like bounce those ideas off of. So I think it's kind of got to be, I think you just have to start engaging somebody and then seeing if they're providing the value. And then if not, you have to get out of the relationship quickly because mm-hmm. you know, that's, again, that's, that's the whole point, right? Is to avoid that, that learning curve at the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I agree with you. So, uh, I think uh, I have done with my questions and thank you, Matt, for coming to our podcast and I wish you good luck and goodbye to all guests for our podcast too. So uh, goodbye, guys. Thank you. All right. Thank you.